All right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in paradise in the rainforest of St. Croix, Virgin Islands. We have somehow stumbled into Wednesday morning, January 13th, 2016. So uh, Wednesday morning is the day I bring you my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant. And of course, lucky today that Wednesday morning follows Tuesday's final, hallelujah, final state of the union address by that pawn of the fossil fuel industry, Farrakh Obama. And guys, you know, I was trying just to work up the lather like I do every year, calling that lying sack of shit planet eater. Now, but I just don't, I just don't have it in me. Just don't have it in me. Maybe, maybe by tomorrow I will get the energy to give you the, the uh, ham bone little tail State of the Union address. But uh, for now, I'm just going to bring you my climate change meltdown roundup rant. So I just have just one little story. How is the mainstream media? This is... Reuters news looking at uh, 10 million interpretations of that bullshit last night. Barack Obama says we must change the way nation manages its fossil fuel resources. President Barack Obama on Tuesday said he would seek changes in the way U.S. oil and coal resources are managed, prompting a flood of reaction from environmental groups pushing him to do more to limit fossil fuel production, yes, and producers of fossil fuels anxious about regulatory changes. So what did, uh, what did Barack Obama have to say last night? I am going to push to change the way we manage our oil and coal resources so that they better reflect the cost they impose on taxpayers and our planet. Warning, warning, uh, uh, okay, let's see. What so? Let's hear from Greenpeace. This is Annie Leonard, executive director of Greenpeace. This was her comment, I guess, uh, about his speech. "Quote: For far too long." The U.S. Interior Department has given away our publicly owned fossil fuels to mining and drilling companies without regard for the damage they cause to communities and our climate. And then, of course, this is Tim Wigley. Tim Wigley, as of the you know, Piggly Wiggly Brothers. This is Tim Wiggly of the Piggly Wiggly Brothers. Uh, this He is the president of the Western Energy, Energy Alliance, a group that represents oil and natural gas companies that drill on public lands. Quote, Obama will close out his term by continuing to issue new rules through the federal agencies that kill jobs and economic growth in order to promote his climate change agenda. Anyway, oh shit, before I uh, forget and before I lose it on here, I want to... Uh, I wanted to, this is, 
Is is HBO mainstream media anymore? This is this, this group that I really like called Vice, uh, teaming up with HBO, which may or may not mean they are owned by uh, Jerry Hall's <clears throat> husband to be, Mr. Rupert Murdoch. But anyway, I I, I think Vice are good guys. So Vice is uh, episode one of its third season on HBO, Our Rising Oceans came out the day before yesterday. Um, Our oceans are rising with human use of hydrocarbons skyrocketing. Waters around the globe are getting hotter and now this warm subsurface water is washing into Antarctica's, Antarctica's massive western glaciers causing the glaciers to retreat and break off. Antarctica holds 90% of the world's ice and 70% of its fresh water, so if even a small fraction of the ice sheet in Antarctica melts, the resulting sea level rise will completely remap the world as we know it, and it is already happening. In the last decade alone, some of the most significant glaciers in Antarctica have tripled their melt rate. And uh, so this is Vice founder Shane Smith getting on the story. And uh, so I just want to play you. Hopefully I haven't lost it already while I've been over here yakking. I'm going to just play you. This is a 43 minute. I highly advise this. Uh, this. This YouTube came out day before yesterday. I'll put the link on it. Encourage you to watch it. This is right dead center in the middle of it. This is Shane interviewing one of these climatologists. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. They're flying from Tierra del Fuego down to Antarctica looking out the window of the airplane and having this conversation. He's got kind of a thick accent so they put uh, subtitles to help you along. Anyway, let's just listen to about a minute of this and then I'll get back to my mainstream Yahoo News roundup. Okay Shane why don't you tell us what I don't think Obama mentioned in his Save the Planet speech last night? How do we stop Antarctica from melting, or at least the West Antarctica ice shelf? I think uh, reducing our carbon emission is wishful thinking at this point. So stopping emissions isn't even enough because we're going too fast. We're going too fast, right? This part of West Antarctica is going to fall apart no matter what. How much sea level rise is contained in the ice? So Pine Island, Twaits, and its neighbors contain about one meter global sea level rise. If that whole sector goes down to sea, uh, it will entrain the retreat of the rest of West Antarctica. And uh, we're talking about three to five meters sea level rise. So one meter would be a, a global catastrophic event, but three meters would be would re, remap the world as we know it. Yes, absolutely. This is a holy shit moment. That's not my shit. Oops. He said, so what, Shiv, you're hearing this, Shane uh, was saying, so, this is a holy shit moment. And the guy's uh, response was that this is not a holy shit moment. This is basically the end of of the world as we know it and uh, you know I'm just gonna I'm not gonna I'm, I'm just gonna keep on going with the camera pointed here cause hoping it's probably too bad a glare uh, th this next story from Associated Press which I thought was the best climate change story of the lot today you can decide for yourself uh, whether this is even a climate change story. 
starvation suspected in massive die-off of Alaska seabirds. And I um, think there are some YouTubes about uh, these thousands of dead seabirds washing up uh, on the beach in Alaska. <clears throat> Seabird biologist David Irons drove recently to the Prince William Sound community of Whittier to check on a friend's boat and spotted white blobs along the tide line of the rocky Alaska beach. He thought they were patches of snow, but a closer look revealed that the white patches were in fact emaciated common murays one of North America's most abundant seabirds washed ashore after apparently starving to death. Quote, this uh, seabird biologist David Irons, quote, it was pretty horrifying. The live ones standing along the dead ones were even worse. Yep, scientists say the die-offs could be a sign of ecosystem changes that have reduced the numbers of forage fish that the birds depend upon. Warmer water surface temperatures possibly, possibly due to global warming or the El Nino weather pattern may have affected the bird's prey. Yes. Um, uh, an estimated 8,000 of the black and white birds were found dead on Whittier Beach alone, said John uh, Piat, research wildlife biologist uh, from Alaska, is talking about the 8,000 dead birds washing up in one day. Quote, that is unprecedented. That sheer number in one location is off the charts. There you go. There is a picture of the end times. Anybody who does not uh, understand what climate change is, uh, is looking like. And then they start looking at, you know, talking about how these fish that the seabirds are 100% dependent on live in a narrow band of cold water. And if the water temperature goes just a little bit above this narrow threshold, quote, they either die or they move. There you go. But of course, no one knows where they're moving to. How about that picture, guys? Anyone uh, wondering what climate change looks like? And this is a long and involved story. Uh, let's see. In the di if the die-offs is tied to low numbers of forage fish brought on by a warming ocean, the rest of 2016 does not bode well for murays, Piat said. Do you think so? The phenomenon known as the Pacific Blob, the Pacific uh, Pacific Blob, there's a scientific term, a mass of warm water in the North Pacific has cooled recently, but is still around. <coughs> and oceanographers predict for 2016 an extreme El Nino. Quote from this bird hugger Piat, what is that going to do on top of the warming effects we've had in the last six months to a year? I'm asking. Because I don't know. There you go, and uh, th that's the you know that's the bottom line from these climatologists and these biologists. Nobody knows 
Oh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, was claiming that that nobody knows what what this shit means, guys. Uh, my personal belief is, uh, you know, I'm kind of I'm more in the uh, the Guy McPherson camp that. Uh, I know that. I know 8,000 dead birds washing up on one beach. I know what that means. It means 8,000 dead birds washing up on a beach. But anyway, maybe all of these uh, climate forecasters that uh, Alex Jones and all those guys are always yelling about are going to start getting some new brains as we see a powerful replacement in the works for climate modeling computer. You know, these climate change deniers always talking about how these computers are completely full of shit. One of the most powerful computers in the world dedicated to climate change, weather, and other earth science research will be replaced in 2017 by a much faster machine. Uh, the new supercomputer to be named Cheyenne will be at least two and a half times more powerful than the Yellowstone supercomputer currently crunching all these numbers capable of 5.3 quadrillion calculations per second Cheyenne will be some 100,000 times faster than a typical home computer and the speed the speed provides unprecedented detail in climate change predictions, including regional modeling of climate effects. So there you go. So we have a new super computer. Look at this goddamn thing, guys. A new super computer to uh, warn us how uh, we're heading into a burning lake of fire. So uh, all the climate deniers can talk about that moron supercomputer. So uh, what does climate change mean for the global middle class? The global middle class. Climate change means more fear and less fun for the global middle class. There you go. The erosion of wealth among the world's middle class due to climate change is a threat to economic and social stability which could spur its one billion members to push for more action on global warming Swiss Bank UBS Group AG said. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Okay. In a study of middle class consumption in 215 cities around the world, these banksters found spending priorities were noticeably different in cities most, most at risk from climate change. In these top risk cities, including Los Angeles, Tokyo, and Shanghai, the middle class spent between, or drum roll plays, between 0 0.6 and 0.8% more on housing compared to the national average and less on luxuries, entertainment, and durable goods. Oh yeah, there's some strong numbers. So the report said middle class households are already changing their lifestyles in the cities most exposed to hotter temperatures, rising sea levels, and extreme weather such as storms and floods. 
and of course the number one way they are uh, as it points out in the article the number one way that the middle class is changing their lifestyles in cities most exposed to hotter temperatures will take a damn wild guess they're cranking up the air conditioning the cranking up the air conditioning which of course as the this brilliant story in the mainstream media points out uh, well if they're cranking up the air conditioning they're putting more and more stress on all of these power plants sending more co2 emissions into the air so we need more air conditioning anyway summing up the story quote more fear less fun is how we might sum it up mm-hmm okay and the continuing story from sub-saharan africa we have el nino and drought take a toll on zimbabwe's cattle yes they uh this is zimbabwe and all over the place there what's going on this week in sub-saharan africa worsening drought in zimbabwe has dried up water holes crops and pastures leaving farmers unable to feed their animals and unable to sell them for much either so many desperate farmers now have animals on the market a cow that used to sell for five hundred dollars <coughs> now fetches just one hundred fifty dollars or in some places as little as fifty bucks as climate change strengthens drought is becoming more frequent and severe in southern africa and that combined with this year's el nino is taking a heavy toll on rural lives and economies yes it is and of course you know what this means is more food aid send them send in the corn send in the corn but uh i was I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to hit the bullshit detector button on this last story to, ra to wrap up this rant. U.S. coal production falls to 30-year low as solar powers up. Here is a, uh, here is a photograph of U.S. coal production falling to a 30-year low there you go according to the mainstream media and i hope they're right one of the dirtiest energy sources saw coal production drop to a 30 year low in the united states last year according to the u.s energy information administration and the news came as arch coal the nation's second largest coal producer filed for bankruptcy Monday in an effort to erase four and a half billion dollars in debt. Hallelujah. Coal production hit a peak of 1.2 billion tons in 2008 and has declined to 900 million tons in 2015 which was 10 percent lower than 2014 and there you go so we never let it be said that we don't have some good news in the end times but anyway i need to uh head down me and my new little lazy dog Sancho Panza says wrap it up Don Quixote we're gonna head down to the beach and uh, find some shade your old middle class 
doomsday prophet is going to head down and find some shade in the end times. Bye, guys.